your boy Mad Lib in Hoboken, chilling, looking through Brazilian records you probably never see unless you come through here. This guy came to my thing and started looking through the records and he have like, you know, some rings, crazy rings like that. And I'm like, damn, man, this guy to have a boss to wear this ring this size is going to be somebody, you know. Egon came by and said, hey, Joel, this is my, you know, Mad Lib. He's like, oh, yeah, hey, man, you, you should like um, uh, come to my shop sometimes. Like, oh, I, I've been there already. And I was like, oh, no, 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 you need to come there when I'm there. It's like, yeah, I've been there when you're there. <laughs> I was like, okay, so let's get back, <laughs> get back to the shop again. It's like I have no idea, you know, who it was, and it's like, you know, let's talk to the mad lead. Same old story being told, I left all of my own. First record I bought was Azimuche. I used to call them Azimuth, and I ended up meeting the guy from Azimuth and doing recording with him. So just from just from those records alone, I got into more records such as Marco's Ballet and uh, Ellis Virginia, Tom Zay. The list goes on. There's many. When I first heard Azimuth, I, I covered all their music and tried to reproduce what they did. From there, fell in love with Brazilian music. You know? Joel was the only one specializing in Brazilian music where you can find tons of stuff in one store. Usually it's just one little section with four little whack records or something, but his whole store had all heat. From there, you know, keep learning. Look right there, all 45s, you know what I mean? All Brazilian, you never see that anywhere. I'm about to get some. Madlib and I have been working together for almost 17 years and we both went to Brazil at the same time. It was the first time for both of us. We showed up in Brazil. We both knew a bit about Brazil, but not enough. And we were both able to throw ourselves in, in Sao Paulo, in 2002 when the prices were good, the reais were very low compared to the dollar, and we had an excess amount of time on our hands. And he went in one direction, I went in another, and at the same time we were living together back in L.A the early Stones throw days, and so we were able to share music back and forth. And every time he got a new record, he'd tell me about it. I'd do the same. And it's just been going on like that for years now. Anyway, yeah. next level. Look at this. This is the eighth wonder of the world. This represents one man's life work. Look at this. It's, it blows my mind. It's like humbling to be around something like this. And that's all Joel. <laughs> Thank you.